Consolidated Study Material for the Certificate of Fitness Examination for Indoor Place of Assembly Safety Personnel, F03, Temporary Place of Assembly Safety Personnel, Citywide, F04. This booklet has been updated with a new section covering active shooter emergency. Starting on June 27, 2016, the F03 and F04 tests will include questions from this new section. The F03C of F test covers the entire booklet and the F04C of F test covers most of this booklet except section 2 special fire safety precautions for theaters. Notice of examination. Title Certificate of Fitness for Temporary Place of Assembly Safety Personnel, Citywide, F04. Date of exam, written exams are conducted Monday through Friday, except legal holidays, 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Requirements for written exam. Applicants who need to take the exam must apply in person and bring the following documents. 1. Applicants must be at least 18 years of age. 2. Applicants must have a reasonable understanding of the English language. 3. Applicant must provide two forms of identifications, at least one form of identification must be government-issued photo identification, such as a state-issued driver's license or non-driver's license or a passport. 4. Applicants must present a letter of recommendation from his slash her employer. See sample at the end of no. The letter must be on official letterhead, and must state the applicant's full name, experience, and the address where the applicant will work. If the applicants are self-employed or the principal of the company, they must submit a notarized letter attesting to their qualifications. For more info, sample of recommendation letter. See comments section for link. Sample of self-employed letter see comments section for link. 5. Applicants must present a completed application for Certificate of Fitness, A20 form. See comments section for link. 6. Applicants not currently employed may take the exam without the recommendation letter. If the applicants pass the exam, FDNY will issue a temporary letter with picture for the job seeking purpose. The C of F card will not be issued unless the applicants are employed and provide the recommendation letter from his or her employer. 7. Special note, the F03 and F04 were previously the F94 Certificate of Fitness, Fire Guard for Places of Public Assembly and Fire Guard for Film Studios. F03C of F is a premises related certification and it is designed for the occupancies with Place of Assembly Certificate of Operation, POT. The F03C of F holders are responsible for maintaining fire safety in any approved Place of Assembly, POT or temporary place of assembly TPA, activities held in the premises. F04 Certificate of Fitness holders are responsible to assist in maintaining fire safety in any temporary place of assembly event with a TPA permit. For applicants who want to take the place of assembly C of F tests. Do you perform your duties in a specific occupancy with a place of assembly permit, e.g. theater, TV studio, stadium, terminals? Yes, will work in a specific premises. Take F03 test. Do you perform your duties in a specific occupancy with a place of assembly permit, e.g. theater, TV studio, stadium, terminals? No, only work for temporary place of assembly events at different locations, take F04 test. The applicants who pass the F03 Certificate of Fitness exam are allowed to pay the additional $25 fee to obtain the F04 Certificate of Fitness without taking the F04 exam. 8. Application Fee Pay the $25 application fee in person by one of the following methods. Cash Credit Card, American Express, Discover, MasterCard, or Visa Debit Card MasterCard or Visa. Personal or company check or money order, made payable to the New York City Fire Department, for fee waivers submit, only government employees who will use their C of F for their work-related responsibilities are eligible for fee waivers. A letter requesting fee waiver on the agency's official letterhead stating applicant full name, exam type, and address of premises, and
copy of identification card issued by the agency, a convenience fee of 2.49% will be applied to all credit card payments. 9. Exam Information The F04 exam will consist of 20 multiple choice questions, administered on a touchscreen computer monitor. It is a time limit exam. Based on the amount of the questions, you will have 30 minutes to complete the test. A passing score of at least 70% is required in order to secure a certificate of fitness. Call 718-999-1988 for additional information and forms. Please always check for the latest revised booklet at FDNY website before you take the exam. See link in the comments section. If all the requirements are met and pass the exam a certificate will be issued the same day. Applicant who fails the exam will receive a failure report. To retake the exam applicants will need to submit a new application and payment. Renewal Requirements This certificate of fitness must be renewed every three years. The renewal fee is $15. FDNY also reserves the right to require the applicants to take a re-examination upon submission of renewal applications. You will receive a courtesy notice of renewal 90 days before the expiration date. However, it is your responsibility to renew your certificate. It is very important to renew your C of F before it expires. Renewal submitted 90 days, up to one year, after the expiration date will incur a $25 penalty in addition to the renewal fee. Certificates expired over one year past expiration date will not be renewed. New exams will be required. To change a mailing address. Submit a letter requesting the change of mailing address and a copy of your C of F with $5 fee. To change a work location. Submit a letter from your current employer, on company letterhead, confirming that you are an employee and stating your new work location with a copy of your C of F and a $5 fee. To request a replacement certificate. Submit a driver's license or passport, social security number, mailing address and a $5 fee. The certificate can be renewed online, by mail, or in person. Renewal online if you are an individual, make sure you have your 12-digit certificate of fitness access ID. This can be found on your renewal notice. If you do not have your renewal notice, your access ID is your 8-digit certificate of fitness number and the last 4 digits of your social security number. If you are submitting renewals on behalf of a company's employees, the company must be approved by FDNY and have an 8-digit company code. To request approval, email pubrenew at fdny.newyorkc.gov. Renewal fee can be paid by one of the following methods. Credit card, American Express, Discover, MasterCard, or Visa. Debit card, MasterCard or Visa. E-check. A fee-exempted applicants cannot renew online only by mail or in person. If all the requirements are met, the certificate of fitness will be mailed out within 10 days. For online renewal go to https slash slash a thirty six sitaipay dot nyc dot gov slash sitaipay slash fnikov renewal by mail mail your renewal notice or if you did not receive a renewal notice a copy of your certificate along with your fee payment personal or company check or money order made payable to the new york city fire department for fee waivers submit only government employees who will use their C of F for their work-related responsibilities are eligible for fee waivers. A letter requesting fee waiver on the agency's official letterhead stating applicant full name, exam type, and address of premises, and copy of identification card issued by the agency and if applicable, supporting documents to NYC Fire Department, FDNY, Cashier's Unit, 9 Metro Tech Center First Floor Brooklyn New York 11201 If all the requirements are met the certificate of fitness will be mailed out within 4 to 6 weeks Renewal in person Submit your renewal notice or if you did not receive a renewal notice a copy of your certificate along with your fee payment by one of the following methods Cash Credit card American Express Discover MasterCard, or Visa. Debit card, MasterCard or Visa. 
personal or company check or money order, made payable to the New York City Fire Department. For fee waivers submit. Only government employees who will use their C of F for his or her work-related responsibilities are eligible for fee waivers. A letter requesting fee waiver on the agency's official letterhead stating applicant full name, exam type, and address of premises, and copy of identification card issued by the agency and if applicable, your supporting documents to NYC Fire Department, FDNY, Cashier's Unit, 9, Metro Tech Center 1st Floor Brooklyn, New York, 11201. If all the requirements are met, the certificate of fitness will be issued the same day. A convenience fee of 2.49% will be applied to all credit card payments for original or renewal certificates. Exam site, FDNY Headquarters, 9, Metro Tech Center, Brooklyn, New York. Enter through the Flatbush Avenue entrance, between Myrtle Avenue and Tech Place. Sample of recommendation letter on employer's letterhead, F04C of F. See the comments section for link to sample letter. Study material and test description. About the study material. This study material will help you prepare for the examination for the Certificate of Fitness for Place of Assembly Safety Personnel. The study material includes information taken from the 2014 New York City Fire Code. This study material consists of three parts. The exam covers the entire booklet and any tables. It will not be provided to you during the test. It is critical that you read and understand this booklet to help increase your chance of passing this exam. The study material does not contain all of the information you need to know to work as a safety personnel. It is your responsibility to become familiar with all applicable rules and regulations of the City of New York, even if they are not covered in this booklet. You need to be familiar with the Fire Code Section 403, 404, 906 and the Fire Rule Section 403-01, 403-02 and 404-01 which regulate the duties of safety personnel for managing the occupants in public gathering events. The F03C of F test covers the entire booklet and the F04C of F test covers most of this booklet except Section 2 Special Fire Safety Precautions for Theaters. About the test. All questions on the Certificate of Fitness examination are of the multiple choice type with four alternative answers to each question. There are 25 questions in the F03 test and 20 questions in the F04 test. Only one answer is most correct for each question. If you do not answer a question or if you mark more than one alternative your answer will be scored as incorrect. A score of 70% is required on the examination in order to qualify for the certificate of fitness. Read each question carefully before choosing your answer. There is no penalty for guessing. Sample questions. Which of the following are allowed to be used while taking a Certificate of Fitness Examination at 9, Metro Tech Center? I. Cellular Phone. 2. Study Material Booklet. 3. Reference Material Provided by the FDNY. 4. MP3 Player. A. 3 Only. B. I. 2 and 3. C. 2 and 4. D. I only. Only reference material provided by the FDNY is allowed to be used during Certificate of Fitness examinations. Therefore, the correct answer would be A. You would touch A on the computer terminal screen. If the screen on your computer terminal freezes during your examination, who should you ask for help? A. The person next to you. B. The firefighters. C. The examiner in the testing room. D. The computer help desk. If you have a computer related question, you should ask the examiner in the testing room. Therefore, the correct answer would be C. You would touch C on the computer terminal screen. If you do not know the answer to a question while taking an examination, who should you ask for help? A. The person next to you. B. The firefighters. C. The examiner in the testing room. 
DU should not ask about test questions since FDNY staff cannot assist applicants. You should not ask about examination questions or answers since FDNY staff cannot assist applicants with their tests. Therefore, the correct answer would be D. You would touch D on the computer terminal screen. Introduction This study material outlines the fire code fire department rules and fire department policies regarding individuals that are responsible to assist in maintaining fire safety in indoor and outdoor places of assembly and public gathering events. The name of the certificate of fitness that will be issued by the fire department to those applicants that pass the exam is place of assembly safety personnel. In the past, the fire department has commonly referred to these type individuals as fire guards. The title of the Certificate of Fitness has changed to Place of Assembly Safety Personnel from Fire Guard because it more accurately represents the duties and responsibilities of such individuals. Place of Assembly Safety Personnel are needed in certain in indoor and outdoor places of assembly and public gathering places primarily to manage the occupants in the event of a fire or other emergency. Verifying that the exits are unobstructed, immediately accessible, appropriately identified and suitably protected is only the first step toward achieving safety in a place of assembly. The management of occupants is primarily involved with moving them away from the hazard. Occupants must know not only where exits are, but also when and how to use them. Without guidance from on-site fire safety personnel, most occupants of places of assembly are likely to exit the same way they entered the building, whether or not it is the nearest or safest exit. The role of fire safety personnel is to help direct occupants to the nearest exit, assuming that the exit is safe to use. Most assembly occupancies are required to have a fire safety and evacuation plan that provides for the safety of building occupants in the event of fire or other emergency. The plan must consider the number and capabilities of building occupants, the type, location, and arrangement of building exits, the fire and its effects on the people and the building and the number, training, and capability of staff to direct or perform fire evacuation or incipient firefighting duties. The plan, combined with effective practice, becomes the means for achieving the desired life safety outcome. Of particular concern in an assembly occupancy is the occupant's lack of familiarity with the building design. Additionally, Lighting conditions in assembly spaces may interfere with the occupant's ability to discern the path of egress travel. In most place of assembly occupancies, occupants should be directed to the nearest exit. The types of public assembly occupancies required to have place of assembly safety personnel available, the number of such persons required and whether they may have other duties in addition to those associated with other than place of assembly safety personnel will be set forth in the fire safety and evacuation plan for your particular facility and slash or the fire code, fire department rules, or fire department policies. Requirements I. When and where are the place of assembly safety personnel required? As a matter of public safety, FDNY may require at least one place of assembly safety personnel in the premises where the certificate of occupancy indicates that 75 or more members of the public may gather indoors or 200 or more may gather outdoors. Generally, the types of places of assembly that may be required to have place of assembly safety personnel on the premises during the public gathering event include, but are not necessarily limited to, cabarets, dance halls, Indoor skating rinks, bowling alleys, museums, bingo halls, movie theaters, television or radio studios admitting an audience, sports arenas, circuses, performing art theaters, live, stadiums, passenger terminal, any event that needs temporary place of assembly permit, TPA, for example, festivals, outdoor concerts, or other similar outdoor public gathering. 2. How many place of assembly safety personnel will be required? Generally, the fire safety and evacuation plan for your particular facility and slash or the fire code, fire department rules, or fire department policies will specify when and how many may be required. For the temporary place of assembly situations, the number of minimum safety personnel will be indicated in the TPA permit. 
the safety personnel should be maintained continuously during the public gathering event. For the TPA events, the safety personnel are recommended to arrive at the premises at least one hour prior to the events and stay until all audience members leave. In some cases, fire department personnel may be on scene and provide additional direction on the number of required place of assembly safety personnel or other fire protection measures that may be required. The certificate of fitness holder must keep the certificates of fitness upon his or her person, or otherwise readily available for inspection by any representative of the department. The safety personnel should be familiar with the procedures of evacuation and the evacuation routes for the areas where they performing their duties. The safety personnel must be familiar with the obligations for notifying the fire department in the event of fire or other event of emergency, FC Chapter 4 Section 401.3. Further information is available at Emergency Planning and Preparedness, FC Chapter 4 Section 403, 404, 408. Fire Protection System, FC Chapter 9 Section 901 and Section 906. Definition. Assembly Areas. A designated area outside of a building to which building occupants are directed to report upon implementation of a partial evacuation or evacuation in accordance with a fire safety and evacuation plan or an emergency action plan. Building Information Card The Commissioner may require by rule the preparation of a building information card depicting and slash or setting forth the relevant fire safety information for a building or occupancy for which a fire safety and evacuation plan is required to be submitted to the department pursuant. A building information card, when required to be prepared, shall be maintained on the premises and made available upon request to any department representative. Building Occupants all persons in the building, including employees, building personnel, and visitors. Emergency Health Care Facility A sheltered area or building either naturally or artificially so lighted as will promote the health and safety of patients provided emergency medical care, and containing cots and or litters and emergency medical equipment and supplies as required by New York State Sanitary Code Part 18.2. Evacuation the emptying of a building of all building occupants in response to a fire or an emergency. Fire Safety and Evacuation Plan A written plan which sets forth the circumstances and procedures for the in-building relocation, partial evacuation, or evacuation of building occupants, required or as appropriate for such occupancy or building type, in response to a fire. FSP Staff the individuals identified in a fire safety and evacuation plan as responsible for the implementation of such plan. Fire Safety Slash EAP Director The employee designated by the owner to perform duties of such position, and who possesses the requisite qualifications and training, as set forth in fire rules. Fire Drill a training exercise by which building occupants are familiarized with and or practice the procedures for the safe, orderly, and expeditious in building relocation, partial evacuation or evacuation, as applicable to the occupancy or building type, in accordance with the fire safety and evacuation plan, and to evaluate the efficiency and effectiveness of the implementation of such plan. In new office occupancies, Fire drills must be conducted every three months for the first two years after the certificate of occupancy is issued. In existing office occupancies, fire drills are required to be conducted every six months. In all hotels, new and existing, fire drills must be conducted at least once every three months on each shift. Partially Evacuation The emptying of a building of some but not all building occupants in response to a fire or an emergency. Disasters at Public Gatherings Sumeru and Murray, 2012, published a review research article of the Crowd Disasters in Plus Currents Journal. In their research, the top five learning points from the history are 1. Overcrowding and crowd control, it did not control the capacity of the event. 2. Event access points, there were too few exits. The flow of occupants was not controlled. The emergency medical services were unable to access event sites. 3. Fire safety measures, 
the emergency exits were blocked or not functioning properly with appropriate signage. There were no full site fire evacuation plans. 4. Medical preparedness there were no major incident plan and supporting hospitals were not involved in a timely manner. The media arrived, distracting emergency department personnel. 5. Emergency response, many events reported poor initial communication or response time with emergency services. Port said stadium disaster, Port said, Egypt 2012. Disaster summary. At least 79 people were killed and over 1,000 injuries were reported after an Egyptian football match between Al Masri and Al Ali clubs. Al Masri fans threw bottles and fireworks at the Al Ali players. The Al Masri fans armed with knives, swords, clubs, and stones, and subsequently attacked the Al Ali fans, who tried to escape by running away. The deaths were caused by stab wounds, brain hemorrhages, and concussions while some were deliberately thrown off the stands or died in the stampede. The steel exit doors were bolted shut and dozens were crushed to death in the stampede. Over 1,000 injuries were reported, some from the panic in the crowd as fans tried to escape. Lessons learned. Control of hazardous materials. Event access points. Fire safety measures. Emergency responses. Love Parade Stampede, Duisburg, Germany 2010 Disaster Summary 21 people who died at the Love Parade Music Festival tragedy because they were crushed in a mass panic and suffocated. Over 500 people were injured. The capacity of the enclosed section was estimated to be 250,000, but there was 1.4 million people attending the festival. The entrances to the music festival were too narrow, and the emergency exits were too few or were blocked. Lessons learned. Crowd control issue. Communication with EMS. Incident plan. Event access points, now all the routes leading to a festival area are being widened and more emergency exits installed. The number of security personnel has been increased so that, in an emergency situation, there's enough manpower to direct people where to go. Lame horse fire, Perm, Russia 2009. Disaster Summary The fire started when sparks from fireworks ignited the low ceiling and its willow twig covering. The fire quickly spread to the walls and damaged the building's electrical wiring, causing the lights to fail. When the evacuation started, some people left via rear exits. The vast intake of oxygen turned the club's hall into a large fire tube and boosted the spread of fire. As fumes and smoke overtook the air, panic erupted and patrons stampeded toward the exit. One leaf of the club's double doors was sealed shut, and the public was unaware of the backdoor exit behind the stage not shown by emergency lighting. At least 153 people died in the blaze, most killed by carbon monoxide gas and smoke. Lessons learned. Fire safety measure. Use of pyrotechnics should be only in approved facilities. No proper signs and direction for exiting. The second leaves of two sets of double doors were locked shut. Station Nightclub Fire, West Warwick, R.I., USA 2003. Disaster Summary. More than two-thirds of the 462 people in attendance were either killed or injured, 100 dead, 230 injured. A live band that was using fireworks as part of its act ignited foam insulation that had been installed around and over the stage. The flames quickly moved to the ceiling, creating billows of smoke and a panicked race for the front door. Lessons learned. Fire safety measure. The club did not have an automatic fire sprinkler system to extinguish the fire. Club was at capacity, it was not overcrowded but most of the victims died at the primary entrance where the rush of frantic spectators created a log jam at the front door. No proper signs or directions to direct the panic people to use exit routes other than the front door. Ellis Park Stadium Disaster, Johannesburg, South Africa 2001 Disaster Summary 43 people were crushed to death and 158 injured at an overcrowded stadium. 
The accident was caused when an estimated 30,000 extra fans tried to cram into the already full 60,000 capacity stadium by shoving and breaking through the fence around the facility or climbed over gates. Guards were unable to stop the crowd from pouring into the already full stands. People outside tried to push into Ellis Park Stadium and were trapped against barbed wire. Movement of a mass people cause a major crush incident. Lessons learned. Overcrowding issues. Bribed security personnel admitted fans without tickets into the stadium and also thousands of complimentary tickets were used. Thus it swelled the numbers far beyond the projections. Emergency responses issue. Failed to clearly identify and designate areas of responsibility. Poor decision-making by security personnel. No operation command center. Uphar Cinema Fire, Delhi, India 1997. Disaster Summary The fire broke out after the transformer at the parking level burst in the theater's basement car park, and 20 cars in the parking lot caught fire, eventually spreading through the cinema. 59 people died and 103 were seriously injured in the subsequent stampede, most of the victims were trapped on the balcony and were suffocated as they tried to reach dimly marked exits to escape the smoke and fire, and found the doors locked. Lessons learned. Emergency responses issue. Cinema management was blamed for losing precious time in alerting the fire services. When the fire broke out, the movie was not stopped nor any announcement made to evacuate the audience. Fire safety measure. The proper distance between the transformer room and the car park was not maintained. Exit signs were not battery operated and once the lights went out, panic struck people had to grope in the dark for exits, many of which were blocked by seats. Proper responses, different results. Electric Cinema Fire, London, UK 2012. Event Summary. Around 200 people were evacuated from a cinema after it caught fire on a busy shopping street. Up to 60 firefighters battled the blaze and that 12 fire engines were sent to the scene. But the staffs acted quickly, calling emergency services who were on site immediately, and all members and guests were safely evacuated with no injuries. Fine Line Music Cafe Fire, Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA 2003 Event Summary Fine Line Fire, which left $1.8 million in property damage, was started when a band's pyrotechnics ignited a fire in the ceiling, as it was at the station nightclub fire. But unlike the station, the Fine Line was prepared for the emergency, not overcrowded, and fitted with proper emergency exits. Once the fire was discovered, management and staff evacuated patrons from the building to safety. 120 patrons were escorted to safety within two minutes. There were no injuries. Part I. Indoor Place of Assembly Safety Personnel. 1. The Duties of Place of Assembly Safety Personnel. Place of Assembly Safety Personnel are primarily to manage the occupants in the event of a fire or other emergency. Verifying that the exits are unobstructed, immediately accessible, and appropriately identified is only the first step toward achieving safety in a place of assembly. The management of occupants is primarily involved with moving them away from the hazard. In sum, two major duties of the place of assembly safety personnel are 1. Maintaining the safety of the occupants during a gathering, and 2. Assisting in implementing the evacuation plan in the event of an emergency. Place of assembly safety personnel are important in preventing injury and fatalities from fires at places of assembly. They should know how to keep exit paths clear, how to identify potential problems, how to report the fire or other types of emergency to the FDNY and the responsible person, and how to keep crowds orderly and safe during an emergency. 1.1 Fire Safety and Evacuation Plan To be an effective place of assembly safety personnel, it is recommended that you have a working knowledge of Fire Safety Plan, FSP. The personnel should be provided with an orientation from the Fire Safety Director slash Fire Safety Coordinator, Building Owner, or other on-site personnel familiar with and responsible for the Fire Safety and Evacuation Plan before starting to perform their duties. 
If any fire safety director or other building employees responsible for implementing the fire safety and evacuation plan or training FSP staff is provided in the building, the place of assembly safety personnel shall follow their instruction for the emergency procedures. In the event of a fire, or fire alarm, the place of assembly safety personnel shall direct the evacuation of the area in accordance with directions received and the evacuation plan. Generally, from the orientation, the safety personnel should know the location of exits and the means of communication with FDNY and occupants in case of emergency. 1.2. Pre-event inspection. Pre-event inspection is important to reduce the potential risks associated with public assembly events. The pre-event inspections should be conducted by the designated person, e.g. your supervisor, you or other responsible person, before the occupancy is to be used or occupied. If any defects are discovered, the building owner or the designated responsible person, e.g. your supervisor, you or other responsible person, should be aware of it and should then make arrangements to have the defects corrected. The following safety requirements should be met. 1. All physical features are installed or arranged according to the approved place of assembly drawing. 2. Door hardware and physical components of the means of egress must be maintained in good working order at all times. 3. All requires means of egress and access to such including each exit, exit access, and exit discharge, must be maintained free from obstructions and impediments to immediate use in the event of fire or other emergency. 4. No storage of combustible material and combustible waste in corridors. 5. Maximum capacity posted. Placard required. 6. Emergency exit lighting. 7. Exit signs and signs indicating the location of accessible means of egress are posted. 8. The seats should be securely fastened to the floors. For the temporary seating, the seats must be secured together in an approved layout. 9. A functioning fire alarm and sprinkler system, if available. If any required fire protection system is out of service, additional F-01 fire guard are required. The acronym ESCAPE may be used as a reminder for doing the pre-event inspection. E. Exits. Dot all exits are unblocked, unlocked, and properly marked. S. Storage the occupancy is clean, orderly, and there is no excessive storage. No storage of combustible material and combustible waste in corridors. The hazardous materials are stored, handled, or used only in the designated areas and are away from any ignition sources. C. Capacity. The number of persons occupying the building or space does not exceed the posted capacity. Capacity certificates are properly posted. A. Aisles. All aisles are free and clear at all times. P. Protection, smoke, fire alarm, sprinkler systems, and fire extinguishers are in proper working order and have up-to-date inspection and testing performed. E. Emergency exit lighting. All exit signs and emergency exit lighting are working properly. 1.3. During the event. As a place of assembly safety personnel, your responsibilities include but not limited to the following duties. 1. You should be aware of possible overcrowding by monitoring the amount of people in your area of assembly. If you notice that your responsible area is excessively crowded, you should inform your supervisor immediately and follow his or her instruction. 2. You should monitor the areas and confirm that the exit paths are always staying clear. Required aisles must be unobstructed. People should not be allowed to stand, in or at the head of an aisle. 3 you should look for situations that could lead to challenges in the event of emergency. An example of a checklist is shown below. Checklist for your area of responsibility, indoor. Pre-event. List. 1. Do you know the locations of the exits, stairways, and evacuation routes? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. 2. Do you know how to notify the FDNY in case of emergency? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. 3. 
Do you know how to notify your supervisor in case of overcrowding and emergency? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. 4. Exits and stairways. Are they free of obstructions? Are exit doors slash gates free of locks? Are self-closing doors all close, and is lighting in exit corridors adequate and fully operational? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 5. Storage. Is the area clean, orderly, and no excessive storage? Are the hazardous materials stored, handled, or used only in the designated areas and are away from any ignition sources? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 6. Capacity Certificate Placard. Is it posted? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 7. Aisle. Are aisles free and clear at all times? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 8. Protection. Is any fire extinguishers provided and are they operational? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. Are fire alarm pull stations provided and operational in my area of responsibility? Mark X if yes. If yes, where are they located? If not required, what procedures will be used to notify the building occupants of a fire? 9. Emergency exit lighting, are they operational? Mark X if yes. If no, report to your supervisor. During event inspection. Exit and aisles. Are the exits and exit paths staying clear? Are all marked exits remained unlocked and unobstructed at all times? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. Potential hazards. Any situation that could lead to challenges in the event of an emergency? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. Emergency notification procedures. Call 911. Notify the building occupants by the designated people, e.g. fire safety director or building owner, for emergency situations. Their phone numbers are Name. Phone number. 2. Special fire safety precautions for theaters. Safety personnel are required for performing arts, motion picture theaters or other similar indoor public gatherings. Regular inspections required for theaters. Every theaters admitting an audience, shall be periodically inspected for fire safety in compliance with the fire department requirements. 2.1. Daily Inspections The responsible person must conduct the daily inspections in a performing arts or motion picture theater on any day on which the occupant is to be used and occupied for a performance or other audience event. Such inspections may be performed by you, your supervisor or other responsible person and the inspections shall verify compliance with the following requirements. A. Means of egress, including exit access, exits, and exit discharges shall be inspected daily to ensure that they are unobstructed, that there are no impediments to their immediate use and that door hardware and other devices and components are in good working order. b. Automatic fire doors shall be inspected to ensure that there are no obstructions to their closing, or otherwise rendered inoperable. c. Standpipe and sprinkler systems, including fire pumps and water storage tanks, shall be inspected to ensure they are in good working order. D. Portable fire extinguishers shall be inspected to ensure that they are readily available for use as required by fire code. E. If special effects are to be used during the performance, all of the conditions of the permit, including, where applicable, a fire watch and slash or additional portable fire extinguishers, are in place. F. Manual fire alarm boxes located on the stage of performing arts theaters shall be tested by activating the alarm. Prior notification shall be made to the central station monitoring the fire alarm system. G. The means by which skylights and other stage smoke vents may be manually activated are fully operational and slash or readily available. H. All areas of the theater, including the backstage, under the stage, and outdoor areas near the fresh air intakes for the building's ventilation system, 
shall be inspected to ensure that there is no accumulation of rubbish or other combustible waste that, if ignited, could cause a fire or smoke condition. 2.2. During the performance. The event coordinator should make an audio announcement not more than 10 minutes prior to the start of each performance or program informing the occupants of the location of the exits to be used in case of an emergency. The commissioner may grant an exception if the occupancy has at least one exit clearly visible from every seat or standing area. As a place of assembly safety personnel, you should verify if the following requirements are complied. A. The prohibition against smoking in performing arts, motion picture theaters or other similar indoor public gatherings. B. All proscenium wall doors in a performing art theater are kept closed. C. Aisles must be unobstructed. It is unlawful to stand, or allow any person to stand, in or at the head of an aisle. The space to be occupied by standing audience members must be separated from the space to be left clear for passage by a rope, tape, barriers, barricades, fencing or other suitable materials at a height of not less than 3 feet nor more than 4 feet above the floor, supported by lightweight posts, all to be constructed and placed so as not to constitute an obstruction in case of panic or emergency. Such standing areas must be clearly demarcated by durable markings on the floor indicating the boundaries of the standing area. For standing in balconies, only one row of persons shall be allowed to stand in balconies. Aisles must be unobstructed. For standing in passageways. I. If the passageway is more than 6 feet and less than 16 feet deep, persons may stand therein, provided an unobstructed passageway of at least 6 feet in depth is left open, and there are no more than 4 rows of persons standing. See Figure 1. Download link is in the comments section. 2. If the passageway is more than 16 feet deep, any number of persons or rows of persons may stand therein, consistent with the approved occupancy, provided that an unobstructed passageway of at least 10 feet in depth is left open. See Figure 2. Download link is in the comments section. 3. In places of assembly having a passageway to the rear of the seats, 6 feet or less in depth, and having in addition an outer passageway in the rear thereof, to which all aisle heads have straight and direct access, a maximum of two rows of persons may be permitted to stand in the passageway to the rear of such seats. See Figure 3. Download link is in the comments section. 2.3. Regular Inspections. The occupancies shall be operated and maintained in accordance with fire code requirements, including conducting the periodic inspection and testing of fire protection systems required by fire department. Out-of-service fire alarm, sprinkler, or standpipe systems shall be reported immediately to your supervisor. And at least one F-01 fire guard must be present. The detailed information about the out-of-service fire protection system can be referred to the F-01 Certificate of Fitness Study Material. Part 2. Temporary Place of Assembly Safety Personnel. 3. The Duties of Temporary Place of Assembly Safety Personnel. 3.1. Orientation, safety personnel is required in any event that needs temporary place of assembly permit, TPA, for example, festivals, outdoor concerts, or other similar temporary public gathering. Prior to the temporary place of assembly event, the sponsor and any promoter of such event shall provide a site plan approved by the Department of Building. The responsible person, your supervisor, you or other designated person, should ensure that its materials, operations, and facilities are designed, installed, operated and maintained in compliance with the requirements of the site plan, the fire code and the fire department rules. To be an effective place of assembly safety personnel, it is recommended that you have a working knowledge of the site plan. In some cases, fire department personnel may be on scene and provide additional direction or modification of the site plan when needed. For TPA activities, the safety personnel may perform their duties for different events based on different site plans. Upon the safety personnel arrival at the area, the personnel should be provided with an orientation from the event coordinator or other on-site personnel familiar with and responsible for the site plan. Generally, from the orientation, 
as place of assembly safety personnel, you should know. 1. The location and number of exits. 2. The procedures of evacuation and the evacuation routes. 3. The limitation of the number of occupants. 4. The concessionaires and the nature of the activity they will conduct and the associate risks. 5. The locations of fire extinguishers. 6. If there is a dedicated telephone line to the fire department shall be available for an emergency. Normally, Department of Building requires. 1. Every safety personnel posted at exit shall be equipped with a two-way radio communication, walkie-talkie, in order to communicate with persons manning a telephone to the fire department for an emergency. 2. Every safety personnel posted at event entrance shall be equipped with a device, e.g. scanner, handheld counter, ticket, to verify the occupancy count. The designated person should monitor the occupant's load and actual flow of the public gathering area. 3.2. Pre-events inspections. The pre-event inspections should be conducted by the designated person, e.g. your supervisor, you or other responsible person, before the area is to be used or occupied. The following site conditions shall be inspected prior to the event. Exit. All exits are unblocked, unlocked, and properly marked storage. The area should be clean, orderly, and no excessive storage. All means of egress should be free of debris and rubbish. No storage of combustible material and combustible waste in corridors. The hazardous materials are stored, handled, or used only in the designated areas and are away from any ignition sources. Capacity limit. What is limitation of the capacity? Aisle. All required aisles are free and clear at all times. Temporary seating must be secured together in an approved layout. Protection. The fire extinguishers are provided at the designated and conspicuous location and they are operational. See link to pictures in the comments section. 3.3 Prohibitions 3.3.1 Compressed natural gas, CNG, the storage, handling and use of CNG are prohibited at outdoor public gatherings. 3.3.2 Flammable liquids it shall be unlawful to store, handle, or use flammable liquids at outdoor public gatherings, except in listed generators or other device, equipment, or system or operation approved by the department. Incidental storage of flammable liquids is prohibited, and all fueling of generators and other approved devices, equipment, and systems shall be conducted only at times other than when the event is open to the public. 3.4. During the event. As a place of assembly safety personnel, your responsibilities include but not limited to the following duties. 1. You should prevent overcrowding by monitoring the amount of people in your area of assembly. If you notice that your responsible area is excessively crowded, you should inform your supervisor immediately and follow his slash her instruction. 2. You should monitor the areas and confirm that the exit paths are always staying clear. Required aisles must be unobstructed. People should not be allowed to stand, in or at the head of an aisle. 3. You should look for situations that could lead to challenges in the event of emergency. An example of a checklist is shown below. Checklist for your area of responsibility, outdoor. Pre-event. 1. Do you know the evacuation routes? Mark X if yes. If no. Obtain such information before starting your duty. 2. Do you know how to notify the FDNY in case of emergency? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. 3. Do you know how to notify your supervisor in case of overcrowding and emergency? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. 4. If you are posted at an exit, are you equipped with a two-way communication device, e.g. walkie-talkie? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain one before starting your duty. 5. Exits and stairways are they free of obstructions? Are exit doors slash gates free of locks? Are self-closing doors all close, 
and is lighting in exit corridors adequate and fully operational? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 6. Storage. Is the area clean, orderly, and no excessive storage? Are the hazardous materials stored, handled, or used only in the designated areas and are away from any ignition sources? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 7. Capacity limit. Are you aware of the limitation of the capacity? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. 8. Aisle. Are aisles free and clear at all times? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. 9. Protection. Is any fire extinguishers provided? Where are they? Are they operational? Mark X if yes. If no, obtain such information before starting your duty. During event inspection. Exit and aisles. Are the exits and exit paths staying clear? Are all marked exits remained unobstructed at all times? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. Potential hazards. Any situation that could lead to challenges in the event of an emergency? Mark X if yes. If no, correct and comply. Emergency notification procedures, call 911. Notify the area occupants by the designated people, e.g. fire safety director or event coordinator, for emergency situations. Their phone numbers are Name Phone number Part 3 Fire Protection System, Emergency Procedures, and Fire Extinguishers 4. Fire Protection System 4.1 Manual or Pull Station Devices Fire alarm systems are intended to notify the building occupants to evacuate in the event of a fire or other emergency. Some fire alarm systems are activated automatically. Other fire alarm systems must be activated manually. Fire alarm systems that are manually activated use fire alarm pull stations. The interior manual pull stations may not directly transmit a signal to the fire department. A telephone call must always be made to 911 or the fire department dispatcher. Do not assume that the fire department has been notified because you hear a fire alarm or smoke detector sounding in the building. Fire alarm pull stations shall be located near the exits throughout the protected area so that they are conspicuous, unobstructed, and accessible. Activating the pull station is the most effective way to notify the building occupants in case of a fire emergency. There must be at least one manual fire alarm station on each floor of a building except residential buildings. Manual fire alarm pull stations should be of contrasting color to the background on which they are mounted. Approved plastic covers are permitted to protect fire alarm manual pull stations and provide relief from false alarms. There are two types of manual fire alarm pull stations. They are called single action and double action stations. A. Single action stations, single action stations require only one step to activate the alarm. The cover on these alarm stations serves as a lever. An example of a single action station is shown below. This kind of alarm station is often found indoors, e.g., in office buildings. When the cover is pulled down, it allows a switch inside to close. This sends the alarm signal. B. Double action stations, double action stations require two steps in order to activate the alarm. The user must first break a glass, open a door or lift a cover. The user can then gain access to a switch or lever which must then be operated to initiate an alarm. To activate this type of alarm station the cover must be lifted before the lever is pulled. This kind of double action station is often found indoors. Another kind of double action break glass station requires someone to break a small pane of glass with a small metal mallet. See links in the comments section. The certificate of fitness holder must know how to manually operate each alarm station on the premises. Once activated, the fire alarm system cannot be reset at the fire alarm manual pull station only. The alarm must be reset at a main FACP, 
fire alarm control panel, after the pull station reset to its normal condition. The alarm may be reset only by an S95 certificate of fitness holder after by instructed by a fire department representative if it is caused by a fire or a fire related emergency. Once activated, a key may be required to reset the manual pull station. Certificate of fitness holders should become familiar with the location of all fire protection devices, as well as, interior and street fire alarm pull stations. All fire alarm pull stations installed or relocated after April 1, 1984, should be installed so that the handle is approximately 4 feet from the floor and it is located within 5 feet of the exit doorway opening. Manual stations should never be blocked or obstructed. 4.2. Safety Requirements Several types of safety signs may be posted at various locations inside the building. The signs are designed to ensure the safety of occupants. For example these signs may indicate a. The general fire safety procedures to be followed during a fire emergency. b. The location of fire extinguishers and emergency exits. c. How to use the fire extinguishers and related firefighting equipment. d. How to sound the fire alarm in case of an emergency. e that the elevators must not be used in case of a fire unless otherwise instructed by the fire department. F. The floor numbers. The certificate of fitness holder should be familiar with the requirements for the fire safety signs. Having knowledge of the signs would help this person to perform his duties. He slash she should also make sure that exit signs posted above doors are always illuminated. Examples of some of these signs are shown below. Links to signs are in the comments section. 4.3. Sprinkler System A fire sprinkler system is an active fire protection requirement specified by FDNY regulations and laws. All apartment buildings constructed after March 1999, are required by law to be equipped with fire sprinkler systems throughout the building. It consists of a water supply system that provides adequate pressure and flows at a rate to a water distribution piping system, onto which fire sprinklers are connected. Its purpose is to control the fire and to extinguish the fire. Sprinklers are intended to control the heat release rate of the fire to prevent building structure collapse, and pre-wet the surrounding materials to prevent fire spread. The fire is only extinguished when the burning combustibles are exhausted or after manual extinguishment is done by firefighters. Water reactive substances may pose special risks at locations. When the sprinkler system is out of service, it cannot extinguishing fires directly to prevent the spread of flames throughout other areas of the buildings. When sprinklers are not present, the chances of dying in a fire or the property loss in a fire will be significantly increased. The sprinkler system is fitted with automatic devices designed to release water on a fire. These devices are called sprinkler heads. The sprinkler heads are normally closed by a disc or cap. This cap is held in place by a heat-sensitive releasing element. A rise in temperature to a predetermined level causes the sprinkler head to open. Water is then discharged in the form of spray. When the sprinkler heads open they are said to have fused. The sprinkler heads are fitted at standard intervals on the piping. If more than one head opens, the area sprayed by each overlaps that of the sprinkler head next to it. A certificate of fitness for S12 for supervision of citywide sprinkler system is responsible for conducting inspections and ensuring maintenance in compliance with fire code. A typical fusible link type sprinkler head is shown in the picture below. Link to sprinkler head are in the comments section. 4.4. Standpipe System A standpipe system is a fire protection system that is designed to provide rapid access to water in the event that a fire breaks out. Standpipes are installed as standalone systems which act like building specific fire hydrants. Standpipe systems can be combined with sprinkler systems. They can provide automatic or manual sprinklers as well as connection points for fire hoses. If the standpipe system is out of service, firefighters may not be able to access to the water delivery system for manual firefighting. These systems are most commonly installed in buildings which are tall, large, or highly specialized or in other buildings. 
Dry stand pipe systems consist of a series of pipes which bring water to various points in a building when it is used by firefighters. The pipes are dry and empty whenever there is not a need. Wet systems are charged, meaning that they always are filled with water. Water reactive substances may pose special risks at locations. 4.5 Fire Alarm System Fire alarm systems are required in many premises as part of a fire protection system. The new 2014 fire code has expanded the requirement for fire alarm systems which include but are not limited to the following buildings, hospitals, universities, or as specified in New York City building code. The primary purpose of fire alarm systems within protected premises is to warn building occupants and transmit signals indicating a fire condition to the fire department via an approved central station company. The out-of-service fire alarm system may cause a delay in building users and the fire department being alerted to a fire and then lead to a risk of serious property loss, personal injury, or death. A fire alarm system is a system consisting of components and circuits arranged to monitor and enunciate the status of fire alarm and supervisory signal initiating devices, and to initiate the appropriate response to these signals. In general, a fire alarm system is classified as automatic, manually activated, or both. If a fire condition occurs, the alarm system warns the occupants within the premises by actuating loud sirens, gongs, bells, speakers, horns, and flashing lights, strobes. An S95 Certificate of Fitness for Supervision of Fire Alarm System is responsible for conducting inspections and ensuring maintenance. 5. Emergency Procedures 5.1. General Emergency Procedures the safety personnel must have a method of communicating to the emergency services. The building owner or the designated person should provide a communication method for the safety personnel to notify FDNY in case of fire or other types of emergency. Notifying by phone is the most direct and effective way to notify the fire department. The safety personnel must also sound the fire alarm pole station when available. Activating the pole station is the most effective way to notify the building occupants in case of a fire emergency. To report an emergency event by telephone, the safety personnel must dial 911. After calling 911, the safety personnel should follow the emergency reporting protocols provided by your supervisor or the designated responsible person. For example, the designated responsible person or the building owner should be notified. The designated responsible person or the building owner will also issue instructions to the safety personnel. The safety personnel must follow the instructions closely. For example, the responsible person may instruct the safety personnel how to take the safest evacuation route from the building. As a public of assembly safety personnel, the FDNY highly recommends that you should be equipped with a flashlight, two-way radio communication device, e.g walkie-talkie, and a cell phone. You should be familiar with your facility's emergency response plan. You must be trained by the responsible personnel to know your responsibility and during the following emergencies. 5.2. Fire Emergency In case of a fire emergency, the most direct and effective way to notify FDNY are calling 911 and also activating the manual pull station when available. The fire alarm will send an alarm signal and it may also notify an approved central station company. The fire department should be contacted directly by phone or other approved device. In case of a fire emergency, building occupants may have to be evacuated. If the safety personnel is responsible for assisting in the evacuation, the safety personnel should remain composed and in control of the situation. He slash she should speak in a clear and concise manner when assisting with the evacuation. The safety personnel's instructions and his slash her actions play an important role in reducing panic during an emergency. Occupants should be instructed to be calm and move quickly to the nearest exit in an orderly manner. The safety personnel should guide the occupants not to use the elevators and should identify the stairwells or other routes of egress for occupants and direct them to use only those stairwells or routes of egress. In summary, the procedures should be Call 911 Provide the following information 
business name and street address. Nature of fire, the extent of the fire, small, large, etc., and type of fire if you identify it, ordinal combustible, flammable liquids, electrical, etc. The exact location of the fire, building and floor or room number, if known. Telephone number for return call. Notify the building occupants by using the fire alarm pull station, if available. Notify the designated building personnel, e.g. fire safety director or building owner. If there is any fire safety director or any EAP staff on duty, follow their instruction for evacuation. If there is no fire safety director or any EAP staff in charge, evacuate the area, in building relocation, partial evacuation, or evacuation of building occupants, along evacuation routes to assembly areas designated by the evacuation plan. 5.3. Medical Emergency. In the case of injury or some other medical emergency, inform the designated person. For the place of assembly events with attendance of over 5,000 people, an on-site emergency health care facility may be provided. If an emergency health care facility is provided on-site, the building owner or the designated person, e.g. your supervisor, should provide a communication method for you to notify the facility for any medical emergency. If there is no on-site emergency health care facility, the safety personnel should call 911 and also follow the medical emergency reporting protocols. In summary, the procedures should be Call 911 slash notify the emergency health care facility. State the immediate medical need and describe Your location and the location of victim or victims, if different from your location, including the business name, street address and room number if you know. Telephone number for return call the number of victim or victims, if different from your location, nature of injury or illness or the victim's present condition, e.g., bleeding, breathing erratically, conscious-slash-unconscious, etc., hazards involved. Follow the exact instructions of the 911 operators or the instructions of the on-site medical technician of the emergency facility. Alert trained employees, members of the medical response team, to respond to the victim's location and stay with the victim, s. Only the trained responders slash employees should provide first aid assistance. If there are no trained responders slash employees in the premises, designate a responsible person, e.g. member of fire brigade, stay with the victim, s. Arrange for an elevator to be placed on standby. Do no move the victim unless the victim's location is unsafe. Control access to the scene. Arrange a designated person to meet the ambulance at the nearest entrance or emergency access point. Direct them to victim, S. 5.4. Bomb or other explosion threats. If you suspect any suspicious packages and are unable to verify its contents, you should follow the emergency reporting protocols provided by your supervisor. Generally, you should do the following. Do not touch slash move slash open the article. Your supervisor or the designated person, e.g. Fire safety director or emergency action plan director, should be notified. Wait for the instruction from the first respondent. If there is any fire safety slash emergency action plan director on duty, follow their instruction. If you call 911. Provide the following information. Your location and the location of suspicious package, if different from your location, including the business name, street address and room number if you know. Telephone number for return call. 5.5. Chemical incident or release. In case of a major spill, you must notify the fire department by calling 911 immediately. After calling 911, your supervisor or the designated person, e.g. Fire Safety Director or Emergency Action Plan Director, should be notified. Wait for the instruction from the first respondent. If there is any Fire Safety slash Emergency Action Plan Director on duty, follow their instruction. 5.6. Active Shooter Incidents. Because active shooter attacks are dynamic events, 
the FDNY cannot put forth a set of required actions during such incidents. However, the FDNY has compiled a list of best practice recommendations based on booklets developed by the New York City Police Department, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and U.S. Department of Justice for Safety personnel to best respond if an active shooter attack occurs. The following recommendations are general guidelines. They are considered as best practice and may be useful in a real-life emergency. It is not the purpose of this training material to provide unbending, absolute rules for situations in which there are a great many variables. The most appropriate emergency responses may vary depending on the specific active shooter situation which occurs within the context of the event, the building design and components. If an active shooter incident occurs outside the building. If an active shooter incident is occurring outside the building, as a safety personnel member, you should call 911 immediately. Secure the building entrances, including loading docks, garage doors, etc., to prevent the shooter, S, from entering the building. Notify the designated building personnel, e.g., fire safety director or building owner. Relocate all the occupants in the affected area i.e. the areas that may experience the immediate impact slash effect by the incidents, such as lobby or window areas, to a safe in-building relocation areas. Prevent building occupants from evacuating to avoid encountering the outside threat. If an active shooter incident occurs inside the building. If an active shooter incident is occurring inside the building, as a safety personnel member, you should react quickly when gunshots are heard and slash or when a shooting is witnessed by following one of the three tactics, avoid, barricade, confront. NYPD suggests three survival techniques during an active shooter incident. The survival techniques can be fluid based on the threat and may not have to be followed in any specific order. Individual decisions should be made based on the active shooter's location, S. 1. Avoid run slash evacuate, if there is an accessible escape path, attempt to evacuate the premise. Be sure to guide slash assist the occupants with the following issues. Have an escape plan and route in mind. Visualize the entire escape route before beginning to move, and avoid using elevators or escalators. Evacuate regardless of whether others agree to follow. Leave your belongings behind. Do not carry any packages or items that could be confused as a weapon or device. Help others escape, if possible. Prevent individuals from entering an area where the active shooter may be. Call 911 when it is safe to do so. Provide the pertinent information. 2. Barricade, hide. If it is not possible to evacuate, find a place to barricade yourself into where the active shooter is least likely to find you. 1. Where to barricade. Ideal barricade place should be out of the active shooter's view, but not just visual concealment. Soft walls, desks may conceal but provide no substantial ballistic protection. Ideal barricade place should be an area with both visual concealment and ballistic cover that can provide protection if shots are fired in your direction. Cover is something of substantial thickness and weight that will stop a bullet. Office furniture and equipment such as vending machines, copy machines, and file cabinets can stop many types of bullets. Ideal barricade place should not trap or restrict your options for movement. 2. What to do when barricading. Lock the door, if applicable. Blockade the entrance with heavy furniture, if applicable. Silence, not vibrate, your cell phone, pager, and slash or any other electronic devices. Turn off any source of noise, i.e., radios, televisions. Hide behind large items, i.e., file cabinets, copy machines, soda machines. Remain quiet. 3. Confront, fight slash take action. If it is not possible to avoid and slash or barricade, as a last resort, and only when your life is in imminent danger, Attempt to disrupt and slash or incapacitate the active shooter. Collaborate and act as a group, if possible. Act aggressively. Throw items and improvise weapons. Yell. Commit to your actions. 
as a civilian, you are not expected to neutralize an active shooter threat. However, you should try to implement the actions that could minimize the injuries to the occupants. For example, if an active shooter starts shooting in close proximity of your location, you should protect yourself based on the three tactics suggested by the NYPD. You may run away from the scene, you may hide slash shelter in place or you may decide to confront the shooter, as a group if possible using improvised weapons. Remember all of these are a personal choice to be decided on by you at that moment. Call 911 as soon as it is safe to do so. Once you feel it is safe to return to your designated working location, if safe to do so, return to carry out your suggested responsibilities. The following actions are recommended by the FDNY upon active shooter events, if you feel it is safe to do so. Immediately call 911. The following information, if known, should be provided to the 911 operator. A. Building address, location of the active shooter or his slash her last known location. B. Number of shooters, if more than one. C. Physical description of shooter, S. D. Name slash identity of the shooter, S, e.g. employee. E. Number and type of weapons held by the shooter, S. F. Number of potential victims at the location. G. If explosions were heard. Note, if you cannot speak, leave the line open and allow the dispatcher to listen. Notify the designated building personnel, e.g. Fire safety director or building owner. Turn on house lights. Visitors normally do not use escape routes that are unfamiliar to them. You need to make sure all emergency exits are clearly posted and utilized in the emergency. If there is a fire safety director or any EAP staff on duty, follow their instruction for evacuation. If there is no fire safety director or any EAP staff in charge, help the occupants to evacuate to a safe area. Manual fire alarm system should not be activated for an active shooter emergency. The manual pull stations should only be activated during fire or smoke conditions. If you are outside, you should report to your assigned evacuation assembly area and be prepared to assist guests to remain calm while they relocate friends and family members. Cooperate with the first responders. Interacting with police officers. During an active shooter emergency, the FDNY normally will not be in the building to direct the required actions. The police officers will respond to the 911 call immediately and go directly to the building. Police officers will proceed directly to the last known location of the active shooter. As a place of assembly safety personnel, you should expect. Police officers may wear regular patrol uniforms or external bulletproof vests, Kevlar helmets, and other tactical equipment. Police officers may be armed with rifles and shotguns in addition to their handguns. Police officers may shout commands, and may order individuals to the ground for their safety. You may need to quickly provide the police officers with the following information, if known. Location of the active shooter or his slash her last known location. Number of shooters, if more than one. Physical description of shooter, S. Name slash identity of the shooter, S, e.g. employee. Number and type of weapons held by the shooter, S. Number of potential victims at the location. The special design of the building, are there open space interior partition materials, etc. Unique tenants, high-profile occupants, political officials, armed security, or disabled person, etc. If explosions were heard, the police officers may request you or other safety personnel to operate and control the building systems to assist in isolating the shooter. It is critical for you to follow orders of the police officers. Remember that the first police officers to arrive on the scene may not stop to help injured persons. Expect teams comprised of additional officers and emergency medical personnel to follow the initial responding officers. These teams will treat and remove any injured persons from the areas that have been cleared by the first responding police officers. They may also call upon able-bodied occupants to assist in removing the wounded from the premises. 
6. Portable Fire Extinguishers The certificate of fitness holder must be familiar with the use of the fire extinguisher. All fire extinguishers must be installed so that the top of the extinguisher is not more than 5 feet above the floor and the clearance between the bottom of the extinguisher and the floor is not less than 4 inches. In other words, no fire extinguisher is allowed to be on the floor. A stackable and portable stand is convenient for temporary installation. 1. The top of the fire extinguishers must not be more than 5 feet above the floor. 2. The fire extinguishers must be accessible and unobstructed. The bottom of the extinguisher must be at least 4 inches above the floor. In the event of a fire extinguisher has been discharged, a fully charged replacement is required before work can resume. The C of F holder is recommended to be trained for the use of portable fire extinguisher. Portable fire extinguishers are important in preventing a small fire from growing into a catastrophic fire, however, they are not intended to fight large or spreading fires. The trained certificate of fitness holders should only consider extinguishing fires when they are limited in size and spread such that they can readily be extinguished using a portable fire extinguisher. By the time the fire has spread, fire extinguishers, even if used properly, will not be adequate to extinguish the fire. Such fires should be extinguished by the building fire extinguishing systems or trained firefighters only. In case of any fire, FDNY must be notified. Fire extinguishers must be used in accordance with the instructions painted on the side of the extinguisher. They clearly describe how to use the extinguisher in case of an emergency. The certificate of fitness holder should be familiar with the use of portable fire extinguishers. When it comes to using a fire extinguisher just remember the acronym PASS to help make sure you use it properly. PASS stands for Pull, Aim, Squeeze, Sweep. The certificate of fitness holder must be familiar with the different types of fire extinguishers available at the worksite. The certificate of fitness holder must know how to operate the extinguishers in a safe and efficient manner. The certificate of fitness holder must also know the difference between the various types of extinguishers and when they may be used. An example of these instructions is depicted in the picture. Class A fires are caused by ordinary combustible materials, such as wood, paper, and cloth. To extinguish a Class A fire, these extinguishers utilize either the heat-absorbing effects of water or the coating effects of certain dry chemicals. Class B fires are caused by flammable or combustible liquids and gases such as oil, gasoline, etc. To extinguish a Class B fire, the blanketing smothering effect of oxygen excluding media such as CO2, dry chemical or foam is most effective. Class C fires involve electrical equipment. These fires must be fought with fire extinguishers that do not conduct electricity. Foam and water type extinguishers must not be used to extinguish electrical fires. After shutting off the electrical equipment, extinguishers for Class A ORB fires may be used. Class D fires are caused by ignitable metals, such as magnesium, titanium, and metallic sodium, or metals that are combustible under certain conditions, such as calcium, zinc, and aluminum. Generally, water should not be used to extinguish these fires. Class K fires are fires that involve vegetable oils, animal oils, or fats in cooking appliances. This is for commercial kitchens, including those found in restaurants, cafeterias, and caterers. A multi-purpose dry chemical fire extinguisher may be used to extinguish multi-classes fires. Examples of some fire extinguishers are shown below. Examples of fire extinguishers. See links to pictures in the comment section. 6.1. Typical fire extinguishers. Symbols may also be painted on the extinguisher. The symbols indicate what kind of fires the extinguisher may be used on. Examples of these symbols are shown below. The symbol with the shaded background and the slash indicates when the extinguisher must not be used. The certificate of fitness holder must understand these symbols. All fire extinguishers should be kept in good working order at all times. Fire extinguisher identification symbols. See the comments section for links to pictures. 6.2.
Fire Extinguisher Inspections The extinguishers are required to be inspected, quick check, monthly. The owner of the premises is responsible to designate a person to perform a monthly inspection. This inspection is a quick check that a fire extinguisher is available and will operate. The quick check should check if 1. The fire extinguisher is fully charged. 2. It is in its designated place. 3. It has not been actuated or tampered with. 4. There is no obvious or physical damage or condition to prevent its operation. The information of the monthly inspection record must include the date the inspection was performed, the person performing the inspection, and those portable fire extinguishers found to require corrective action. At least once per year, all fire extinguishers must be maintained by a FDNY approved company and a W96 certificate of fitness holder. This concludes the study material for consolidated study material for the Certificate of Fitness Examination for Indoor Place of Assembly Safety Personnel, F03, Temporary Place of Assembly Safety Personnel, Citywide, F04. Good luck.